He said, oh, yeah, I will, that's very good. He loves it. And he will make sure he swore to us. When you say he swore to us, did he use those words, I no. swear to you? Oh, he promised. He, he promised us. Mm -hmm. And did you... I was totally convinced that, you, was, that, that yeah, he was going to give the songs to Bob. Mm -hmm.
that's when I met Mikey Harris. And uh, you met Mikey Harris uh, through her son, Duke. You know, I met Mikey Harris first at Tony Tiller's house at a party. That's when I met Mikey Harris. And Sir, I want to turn now to this uh, meeting that you uh, said happened with Mr. Tiller. Uh, do you remember when that occurred? Your statement says July of 87. Is that about when it happened? Yeah, I believe so. For, uh, for Anthony to come out, we, we sat there for a while. Jim had these uh, lyrics books with him, one, one big thick book, mm -hmm. and uh, we, we were just sitting there for a while, then Anthony came out. I remember him being uh, in a suit, good looking like black man, gentleman, uh, and, and he sorry, took us aside. Gentleman. Yes. And uh, we went to his office, and uh, we just sat down, it was like a big chair, one of these, uh, looked like a recliner kind of chair, but it was just a big chair that I was sitting in. And um, they were they were acting like they were good friends. I mean, talking, hugging, you know. Um, and we, we actually we they read some of the lyrics. Um, he had his he had Jim's book in his desk, and he was reading through it. Jim was pointing out certain lyrics to him, and they were talking and talking. Then we got into the conversation about recording this this my cousin's wedding tape, and uh, I just wanted to get some feedback from Anthony based on his position in this company, what he believes that this anything could happen with this if we produce it. And the feedback I got is absolutely yes. Um, that we, we got into the Bob Dylan situation. Does he read? Uh, does he is he getting Jim Demiana's uh, lyrics? And I remember the answer, yes. We've been he's been reading his lyrics and and uh, I even remember recalling Anthony bringing up uh, Bruce Springsteen's name. And that was just like from nowhere. I never heard that before, but I, I, it just came up that uh, Jamie's lyrics was also given to Bruce Springsteen, which I knew who that was. And uh, I remember leaving this meeting with a with a very good feeling. Okay, that I was convinced by Anthony is if if I produce this record, if I pay for it, that it could end up being a very big hit. Okay, sir. And that's basically what happened at the meeting? That's basically it. I lived there with very good vibes. And uh, if you can tell us uh, what the office looked like in a little more detail, were there, were there records on the wall? Were there, uh, there were records in the lobby. I know that. Mm -hmm. There were a bunch of records in the lobby. I was only in that building that one. Can you list for me, sir, what other songwriters, other than Mr. Damiano, whose material you had on any shelf in your office while employed either by CBS or Sony. Songwriters. Do the Gershwins count? Appreciation, anything. Tokens of appreciation. Or gifts, anything that you can think of. None that I can recall, but if I did... I did it as a friend to a friend, because I considered Jim a very good friend. And I occasionally give my friends things as my friends give me things. Okay.